Hi, second grade students. Today's story is from Knowledge 7, Lesson 6, called Westward on the Oregon Trail. Before I begin our story, I'm going to go over our vocabulary words. Our first vocabulary word for today's story is the word steep. Repeat after me. Steep. Steep means having a very sharp slope. Our next vocabulary word is the word ruts. Say ruts. Ruts are grooves worn into soft ground. Our last vocabulary word is the word hardships. Say hardships. Hardships are difficult conditions or situations that make someone uncomfortable or cause harm. The wagon train was moving westward along the Oregon Trail. The families walked beside or rode in large covered wagons pulled by oxen. Each family had only one wagon, but that wagon was able to hold almost everything the family owned. Each family packed food, things like flour, potatoes, and beans. They took clothes, blankets, soap, candles, furniture, pots and pans, china, and rifles. They even had to take barrels of water with them because they weren't sure where they might find clean water along the way. By the time everything was packed in the wagon, there wasn't a whole lot of room for much else. In addition to the oxen that pulled the wagons, some families brought other animals, such as horses, sheep, and cows. These animals didn't go inside the cover wagons. Instead, they were tied to the wagons with rope and walked behind or beside them. Many of these families were headed to the Oregon Territory, where they planned to settle and make new homes. Back in the East, it had become too expensive for the settlers to be able to own their own land. They hoped that by traveling West, they might find a place to build their own homes. Others chose to go for adventure of starting a new life. The road west had been challenging already. The wagon train had been traveling for three long months. The settlers were following a rough or uneven trail of wagon ruts to the Oregon Territory. After many wagons followed one path, the ruts became so deep that it was very difficult or even impossible for wagons to travel without getting stuck. As much of the Oregon Trail went through what was known as Indian Territory, the travelers encountered Native American tribes along the way. Sometimes the Native Americans were fear fearful that the settlers would decide to stop traveling and just make farms right there on their lands. On this particular day, the wagon train moved slowly in 100 degree heat. Thomas Lawrence, a settler and the wagon train scout, rode quickly over to the leader of the wagon train, Captain Jeremiah Ward. There's water half a mile ahead, but it's not fit for drinking, Mr. Lawrence reported. We ought to reach Sweetwater River by noon, though, and that water is safe. Captain Ward nodded his thanks. Good work, Thomas. When the wagons reached the Sweetwater River, everyone enjoyed a long, cool drink. Captain Ward ordered, First, we'll take the wagons and oxen across the river. Then we'll swim the extra horses over. The cattle will go last. To lighten their loads for the crossing, families removed any heavy objects from their wagons. The settlers brought many of these items to have in their new homes to remind them of their homes back in the east. Unfortunately, now many of those items they'd hoped to have in their new homes had to be left behind. Fortunately, everyone crossed safely. Once everyone was across and settled, they refilled their water barrels and canteens. They would need the fresh water for the next portion of their trip. Then they set up camp for the night. They made small campfires over which they cooked their food, beans, and bacon. Less than an hour after darkness fell, when most of the travelers were sleeping in their tents or wagons, the wind began to rise, whooshing across the plains. Thomas Lawrence, who had been watching the cattle, could hear rumbling off in the distance. Suddenly, a flash of lightning split the night sky. The next instant, a blinding rain fell on the sleeping pioneers. Then, out of nowhere, the wind blew so hard that half of the tents blew over. Those who had been in tents ran to their wagons, squeezing into any space they could find amid the furniture and supplies. Still, everyone was already soaking wet, and even tying the canvas flap shut could not keep some of the rain from blowing in. Inside the Lawrence family wagon, everyone huddled together, shivering. Nine-year-old Barbara said, 
Folks call these wagons prairie schooners, Mama, as if they were schooner ships sailing the wide open land instead of the sea. I didn't really think that the schooner ships and our prairie schooner were that much alike. But with the wind rocking the wagon back and forth, it feels like we really are at sea. Six-year-old Abigail whispered, I wish we were home. At that moment, the canvas flaps open and Thomas Lawrence joined his family inside the wagon. Abigail asked, Papa, why aren't you with the cattle? He explained, That first lightning bolt spooked them so much that they ran off. We'll have to round them up after the storm. After a cold and miserable night, the morning dawned cool and gray. Abigail woke to the sound of a bell. Peering out, she exclaimed, Why, it's Snowbell! She found her way back! Sure enough, the Lawrence's milk cow was standing outside the wagon, ready to be milked. Mr. Lawrence told his wife, Patricia, have one of the boys milk her. I have an idea. Mr. Lawrence trudged or walked heavily through thick mud to Captain Ward's wagon. Captain Ward was already up helping other people. Our milk cow came home, Mr. Lawrence reported. If we can follow her tracks, maybe we'll find some of the other animals. Captain Ward agreed, and so on horseback, Thomas Lawrence and some other men followed the cow's track back to where she had been. Beyond a grove of trees, they found the missing animals calmly chewing the wet prairie grass as if nothing had ever happened. Mr. Lawrence rode back over to his wife near the family wagon and joked, well, that certainly was fun. She then replied, let's hope we've seen the worst of this Oregon Trail. But two months later, the trail presented one last challenge to its pioneers. They were crossing the high mountains of the eastern part of the Oregon Territory on their way to the Green Valley beyond. That day, Captain Jeremiah Ward and Thomas Lawrence stood together and looked down at the steep mountain trail ahead. The captain said, We have to take this steep path down. There's no other way. If we turn back to take the southern trail, we lose too much time. Then we never make it out of these mountains before the winter snow hits. Mr. Lawrence agreed, it's the only way, but it will be difficult. When I scouted ahead, he said, I found that the forest crowds in too closely for a wagon to travel on either side of the trail, so we must take the trail itself. At least this extremely steep stretch is fairly short, only about 160 feet. Then the trail levels out and is in good condition again. Once you make it down the hill, the trail should be much easier. Fortunately, Captain Ward had a plan. Tell everyone to unhitch the oxen from the front of the wagons and reconnect them to the back. We'll walk with them on the paths on either side of the trail, and the oxen will be able to hold the weight of each wagon so that it doesn't slide down. After the wagons are down, our families can follow on foot. We'll bring the herds down last. Half an hour later, the first wagon started down the steep trail. Six oxen, attached to the wagon by ropes or chains, strained to keep the Lawrence's wagon under control on the bumpy, uneven surface. Watching from the top of the hill was Mrs. Lawrence and the children. As they watched the wagon descend, Mrs. Lawrence said, It'll be a miracle if my china doesn't shatter to pieces with all that bouncing and banging. After what seemed like a lifetime, then came a cry from the bottom of the incline, We're down! Everything's in one piece! Everyone cheered, and Captain Ward ordered the men to move the rest of the wagons. By the end of the day, everyone had made it down to the bottom. That night, camping beside a clean, flowing stream, Captain Ward announced, Tomorrow we'll be out of these mountains, and then we're almost home. Ten days later, Captain Ward led his tra let wagon train out of a forest and into a lush green valley spread out as far as the eye could see. As each wagon emerged from the trees, each family saw the valley ahead, and everyone fell silent. This was the place that the travelers had dreamed about and worked so hard to reach through the six months of hardships or difficulties, and laughter, rain and hail, wind and heat.